It's that's like sickening. Yeah, it's, it's not. I I don't I don't know I don't know how <laughs> I feel about that. Yeah, that's exactly. I think that's the intended. Um, uh, that, that's the intended. Um, you know, reaction for it. Like they, they wanted to make something that was like shock humor, but also like kind of grotesque and horrifying. But somehow they juxtapose it with a. By the way, we're talking about uh, the music video "Walls Fall Out," which might be one of the most like explicit, like disgusting displays of art that I've ever seen. And uh, but somehow they juxtapose this like really grotesque imagery with a song that is kind of a banger. Yeah, like the if you. It if sounds you, pretty good. If you heard the song and you didn't pick up on the fact that they were saying prolapse and like <laughs> talking about asses and <laughs> oh stuff, like, God. like you would be like, "Oh, this is a, like this is kind of a catchy song," but the lyrics are foul and ugh. It's just I kind of want to like I know what the actual lyrics of the song are because I, I mean I heard certain words, but it's a fa- it's pretty fast. It's hard to catch that at all. Yeah, I recently heard about the that music video. Um, from a let's play and I was like they were just trying to describe it and I'm just like man I have to see what they're talking about and I, I still was not ready like I felt like I needed to go take a shower after I watched the video <laughs> oh god Dude, the the lyrics of walls fall out prolapse wait <laughs> wait it said it said it was funny Oh, the lyrics of uh, Walls Fallout Prolapseville on Reddit. I like how the first link was, it said Walls Fallout, not Tim and Eric. It's, it's It has that aesthetic of like kind of disturbing and weird CG stuff, but they it's way more gnarly than Tim and Eric. Do you want to do a quick reading of these? Like uh, a very sensual reading of Not too much. I mean, we're an explicit show, but... I mean that's if it gets if it gets bad we'll we'll stop it immediately. Yeah, go go for it, Ryan. All right. Honey, I say nades or nadine. Whichever one I use the same thing. Bus. I say B P H the b- I don't know if we should stop it there. I that that'd be a appropriate place to stop. Okay. Yeah, it gets, <laughs> it gets it probably gets way worse, but we're just going to we're just gonna it's close already, that door. It's too. Yeah. It's gone too far. Anyways, we're talking about archery today here yeah. on People Also <laughs> First. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you pivot out of walls fall out. Maybe yeah, you can't sh- really do it well, maybe, successfully. Yeah, I mean, maybe we shouldn't have opened the show with that, but that's my bad. I I wanted to see your genuine reaction to it. Well, now I get to be sick for the entire episode. Oh. So. <laughs> the entire episode about something not sickening at all, archery. So it's yeah, like it's yeah. kind of mundane. It I is. mean, there can be some sickening parts of it, archery uh, when it comes to war and. Uh, hunting as well oh man hunting like in the hunger games have you ever seen that movie series ryan i've never seen it i've never seen the hunger games you've never seen jennifer lawrence as katniss everdeen i've i've seen her but i i've never seen the movie it's fine is it uh isn't it like pretty much like battle royale yeah the uh the older live action Japanese movie. Yeah. Didn't they be, they just stole the they just stole the entire premise? Not, though, didn't no, they? Uh, it's not the exact I I don't know. I've seen Battle Royale. I mean if you if you sum it up to like pivoting a a bunch of random people against each other in a fight to the death, then yes, they're it's pretty similar, but uh, the uh, the uh, Hunger Games was a little bit more insidious uh, because, you know, they would they would uh, take tributes from all the different regions of the world, and the tributes would all be like minors, so it would it's all like kids that are forced to fight to the death. Yeah. So it makes it a little. I mean, battle royale. Those were like I would say teenagers or young adults. Yeah, I think from yeah, my I think they're in high school. Okay, I don't know. There's it, as all good Japanese anime, and sh- well, it's not even anime; it's live action. But yeah, shows are. I feel like um, 
I feel like there's no like deep backstory. Like they don't really personalize the the kids that are in the battle royale. Nah. Whereas like Hunger Games, like which is based off of a novel series, uh, you know, there was a lot of like character development and like I don't know a lot of like suspense building. Whereas Battle Royale was like. It just open. It like cold opens on them like waking up in in the the school or wherever they were like in the battle arena, mm-hmm. and then they just start fighting immediately. Whereas Hunger Games is a lot more like build up. There's and sh- like a backstory and showing you like the fascist government that's like makes this happen every year. Oh, so, oh, it's okay. Yeah, there's a lot more like world building in the universe of Hunger Games, whereas Battle Royale it was just like. They blow a whistle at the beginning of the movie, and then it ends when everyone's dead, essentially. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you're saying, like, Battle Royale would be, like, the uh, the arcade kind of version. Yeah, it would be more of, like, the beat em up if you're going to put it in, yeah. like, video game terms. Yeah, whereas, whereas Hunger Games is more, like... Narrative-driven. Skyrim. Sure, yeah. I mean, you can get a bow and arrow in Skyrim. Except in Hunger Games, it's, like, a futuristic dystopia. It's not, it's not a, like, medieval fantasy or anything like that. Oh, yeah. That's true. But, yeah. Uh, anyways, the main character... So what you're saying is, like, uh, bow and arrows, they span a large time period, all the way from medieval to something modern like the Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. They, they've they been around for many years, going back to ancient times, as, as I would guess. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. The main character of Hunger Games, she, ha- she used the bow and arrow. That was, like, her weapon of choice, because she was, like, lived off the land, and she was a hunter and shit. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So it is, you know, hunting is kind of tied into the character. Uh, and then she becomes a hunter of men. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. In like a weird sexy way or like just. Mm, uh, not really. Oh, she's just hunting men. Like she's No, it's more murderer. of a humble. She's like trying to uh, game the system. Gotcha. Outthink the. Uh, the fascists if you will oh oh and save or acquire victory from the inside yeah yeah okay okay i gotcha yeah it goes pretty deep i mean it, you know a lot of people think of the hunger games as just like some young adult fiction you know that you would read when you're like 13 but mm-hmm. it holds up all right movies are fine do you think that uh katniss everdeen is cooler than hawkeye from you know avengers uh it's hard to say because i don't know very much about the marvel universe and i've never seen one avengers movie so i have a very like i i barely even know who knight wait what is it what, what's her name hawkeye again? hawkeye yeah. it's a dude so okay there you go yeah. <laughs> i was thinking of scarlett johansson but she is she a different oh she's uh, black widow yeah 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 dude i don't know shit about marvel and i don't really care to learn too much so i'm more of a dc guy <laughs> yeah that's okay that's yeah. okay i do like i like both but you know i think marvel's movies to this point besides like with the exception of like the dark knight and joker were all pretty much better than any of the dc movies uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so too. Like overall, like if you're going to see a Marvel movie, it's like you know what you're getting. It's gonna be good, like you know. Well, but it's gonna be middle of the road. Middle like, of the road, yeah, but uh, CGI heavy. Uh huh. But when you go see like a DC one, it's like they've changed Batman so many times and like oh, yeah. made so many weird spinoffs. That's that, part that... of the fun of Batman, though, because yeah, if you ever watched the original Batman show with um Adam West, yeah, like that show is like goofy as hell. You know, that's like the that's like the least serious take on Batman. And then you go to the other side of the spectrum, which would be Dark Knight, where it's you know getting more like psychological thrillery mm-hmm. vibes, and then. I don't know. I think the new new Batman should be cool, don't, uh, even though Robert Pattinson is playing. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. But I've seen teaser like uh, photos of him in the suit, and it's like, ah, oh, he looks pretty badass. I mean, in my opinion, he looks cooler than Ben Affleck did as fucking, oh man, Batman v Superman. What a steaming pile of dog shit that yeah, was. Yeah, I never wasted my time on that. Ugh. I heard it was bad, it's and just I was like, like nah, come on, no, DC. I can't like, do you, it. You, could, you could easily be so much better than Marvel in a different way. Yeah. But you're just fucking up. Like, <laughs> I would say that DC is always trying to like do some new 
change to their characters. It's like they never oh, go yeah, the classic route. Oh, yeah, then they route. did Suicide Squad, and yeah. that's a completely different, like, aesthetic. Uh-huh. And, oh, man, that movie was bad. Isn't there already a second Suicide Squad, or... Uh, yeah, the Birds of Prey, but it's just like the it's based on Harley Quinn. Yeah. It's not Suicide Squad. It's like her but, group after that. Yeah, but isn't there wasn't there another Suicide Squad or are they? I don't think so. Oh no. no. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I hope not. But, <laughs> like, please just make more movies like Joker, and then we'll be fine. Just yeah. focus on that aesthetic, and I swear you're gonna be you're gonna be doing good. Or even even Gotham was like not super disappointing to me. Like, True. The, like the way they handled the tone of the show. Yeah, I feel like Suicide Squad was more aimed at like a younger audience, like for yeah. Joker, whereas was... like Joker and it was definitely more of like an adult audience. Like yeah. you wouldn't go see that if you were like. 13 you know yeah i guess so i mean it just it felt so like edge lordy you know it's just like trying to be edgy for the sake of being edgy when all you need is like you can still have those goofy cartoonish characters but like fucking put some good writing behind it because yeah it doesn't have to be puns about ice (laughs) or will smith going are you saying we're going to be part of some sort of suit. <laughs> I forgot about that line. Like every time I... <laughs> they just like blatantly say the name of the movie. Like they may as well be like looking at the audience while you're doing yeah, it. Like Will breaking Smith the fourth wa- wall. Yeah, Will Sm- Smith might as well have like pulled the Deadpool, looked directly into the camera and just like slowly winked. <laughs> But yeah, that's essentially what he did. So we and it just in some kind of suicide squad. It just like just made me sad. Right like eye. I like Will Smith, and he's, he's like great. always been yeah. an amazing actor. So when I see him like delivering that line, I'm just like, ah oh, man, like I hope you at least got paid a shit yeah. ton of money. Well, with him, he probably like doesn't even care at this point. So he like was looking at a line like that, and he's like, I'm gonna lean into this real hard, like. <laughs> I mean, you have to. Yeah, because he knows Jared, it's a bad line. You think Jared Leto like put on all that shitty makeup and was like, "Fuck yeah, dude." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "No, I'm a cartoon character. I have to be like, I have to play up the campiness." That's what it was, you know. It was like fucking. It was really campy. It was Rocky Horror Picture Show of the DC Universe. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good way to describe it. But you know, it's it's. I don't know if I would say that that movie was as good as uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, the oh movie. no, there's no way. No, I, that's meat, the only part of that comparison. Fucking where meatloaf I'm like, oh. wasn't in the Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have meatloaf in your movie, you're fucking doing it wrong. Like, we need to bring back meatloaf, dude. <laughs> bring back meatloaf. Yeah, hashtag bring back meatloaf. <laughs> I didn't know he went anywhere. Doesn't he? Isn't he still a performer? Yeah, but you never hear about him anymore. I want. I wanted to go see him one time, but his concert got canceled. I had tickets, like for real. Oh. I used to love meatloaf. Like that was like he was like my dude. <laughs> I remember, uh, uh, like my parents had a bad out of hell cassette. Yeah, and uh, I always thought the artwork was like really cool, but I never. I don't remember ever getting into the music, but I was really young. His his music's like really all his songs are really long, but like they change. It's like telling a story. Yeah, they're like theatrical. They're very theatrical, yeah. And yeah. and dude, just paradise by the dashboard life. It's just a it's a classic, man. You can't. I I can't tell you the names of any of his songs except for uh, I would do anything for love or for well, you. Um, you know, like bad out of hell, yeah. Uh. I I maybe if I heard it, but I don't really remember how it how it goes. Oh oh no! I thought you, I was just saying you know the name of that song. Like yeah. I've heard you talk. You said something about it before. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but Meatloaf. I I don't know. I feel like he got more attractive with age, but there's some music videos where you're like, oh no, you know. <laughs> Meaning what? Like you don't. Oh, like. Like, he didn't look very healthy. <laughs> yeah, I know you used to be, like, really big, like, most of his career, right? Well, yeah, but, he, like, he was man. such a, like, he was so, like, uh, uh, like, his performance was so energetic that you were just like, man, he's, like, sweating up a storm, like, his hair's, like, flying all over the place, and mm. he just got into it. Like, like I was like, man, you were gonna, 
You're gonna have a heart attack like going like that. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> uh, I think it would be fun, but I'd probably be really sweaty too. Some people just sweat more. I know. I know. It's I, fine. One time I saw a show. Uh, I think it was the Black Angels. <laughs> Yeah, I saw them, and and whatever the band was that performed like as their opener, the guitarist was just like he definitely had like hyperhidrosis. Whoa! And obviously, like bright stage lights don't help, and when, like you're like rocking out and like you know bobbing around, but he was just seriously dri- like dripping sweat like so consistently that like you could tell like his entire head was just like soaked and like like most of the front of his shirt was soaked and like you can see visibly like beads of sweat like rolling like Ugh. like rolling off his shirt down onto the stage and sometimes it would like ricochet and like hit somebody like go on their face or yeah and there would be that little droplet that comes out yeah in slow motion and like people were just like noticing like definitely noticing like damn look at this dude he fucking drenched yeah <laughs> Like I don't, I don't know. I might not be any like, different. He's doing some work up there. Yeah, I mean those stage lights. They gotta be. They gotta be hot. They gotta be bad for you. You know, all those UVs. I don't know. It's definitely warm though. Having a spotlight on you. Yeah, just like we are here on this podcast that has been entirely about archery. Totally. Yeah, but when was archery? And also started? the. Before we get back in archery, oh, okay, okay. we got to mention that we're uh, here on People Also Search For. Well, we did sort of earlier, but yeah, this is People Also Search For, the podcast where we answer life's greatest questions by searching the internet. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> steamrolled right through that. Yeah, Great, yeah. so gracefully. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Well, you you mentioned it earlier, so I thought like, oh, that was that was just the intro. Oh yeah, I said what we were gonna be talking about. Yep, yep. Yeah. So when was archery started? Started. We gotta know like when it started. How it suggested archery invented, and then you just like didn't care. Wait, just when was stuff. archery invented? Well, that's the first uh, th- like suggestion that came up, but then you just like barreled we'll, past it. We'll just we'll just uh, started. Oh, we're screwing up. When was archery invented? Oh, it's the same exact page. Wow. Figures. Google knows. Okay. Well, although archery probably dates back to the Stone Age around 20,000 BC. That's old. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I knew it had to be pretty pretty ancient. The earliest people known to have regularly used bows and arrows were the ancient Egyptians who adopted archery around 3000 BC for hunting and warfare. I, you know, I never imagined what we- weaponry Egyptians used because like whenever I think of Egyptians, I just think of the pyramids and like them like like the like the pharaoh and all the people building the pyramids like yeah yeah i didn't think about like them eating or needing to hunt or anything really no no it's like obvious it's it's obvious but i never even thought like i can't imagine an egyptian with an arrow like a bow and arrow Hmm. like have you ever seen that an egyptian with a bow and arrow i mean i'm sure there's like hieroglyphs of egyptian like I don't know. I'm sure there's hieroglyphs in like tombs and stuff that like depict archers or like hunting. It's crazy to me. So, well, what? I don't know. I I I'm, I failed to see like. Did you ever picture like Stone Age people with bows and arrows and hunting and living off the land? No, I just well, when I think <laughs> Stone Age, I think like like uh clubs and stuff yeah. like handheld weapons not really bow and arrow i mean i just goes oh. to show you man how long humans have been when i think of ancient china i think of bow and arrow but not when i think of egypt like egypt only makes me think of pretty golden like suits mm. and like oh people. like you think of like more of like civility and like 
Yeah, and like there was like how it was like ruled by a pharaoh, and like yeah, I mean, the... <laughs> unfortunately, it wasn't ple- that pleasant. Like it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't pleasant. But especially for all the Egyptian slaves, that probably was not fun for them at all. No, it was probably terrible for all of them. Yeah, I mean, haven't you but ever that's, seen? That's uh, why I think of that. And haven't I don't you think, ever seen but... uh, that Bible movie? The it's like, is it Moses? Yeah, it's Moses. Moses. Uh, I don't know if I have. Uh, well, the, uh, I, what, there's like a it's what, like a famous like it. It looks like similar to Road to El Dorado. Oh, oh, the the cartoon one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's um, it's about Moses and what is that one called? Uh, it's not called Moses. I think it's called the Prince of Egypt. Oh, could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this what you were talking about? Yep, that's exactly what I was talking about. The Prince of Egypt. It's a retelling of the book of Exodus, Egyptian prince Moses, upon discovering his roots as a Jewish slave. <clears throat> I saw that in theaters with my sister and my mom, and, like, it's actually a really good movie, like, despite it, like, being inherently, like, tied to religion like mm-hmm. and Christianity. It's, like, a really good animated movie. And it's not... I don't think it's Disney. It's right? not Disney. No, I think like I forget. There's some story about like this movie, and it's like the first movie that a, a company outside of Disney made in a certain style or something. I have to. We'd have to look it up. What What if you add uh, bow and arrows after the Prince of Egypt? <laughs> oh, because there might they might even ha- show bow and arrows in that movie. Nope. No. See, that's why I never thought about it because <laughs> it's never depicted that way in some kind of animated film. Did you watch that movie when you were a little kid? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay, I figured like, did you did it like did you relate to it at all? Like, did it make you feel you any mean, different? I'm Jewish? Yeah. Um, n- not particularly. I mean, I've heard the story since I was younger, but like, I wasn't. I mean, I I realized that it was that's kind of like tragic and it's like the jews were able to like leave and part the seas and escape you know yeah but and um, did you like believe in the movie as like oh that's the same thing as like my my religion or whatever yeah yeah oh yeah i knew that it was the same as the religion yeah yeah i feel like it's similar to like uh like isn't there there's probably like some kind of christian movie like where like the kids like a bunch of kids would see it and it, they know that that's what it's about. Oh yeah. What, what would that, what's, what would be the equivalent be like veggie tales? I don't maybe know. Veggie tales. Like veggie tales was kind of like a retelling of Bible stories and they would like have like recreations where the, the tomato and the cucumber <laughs> would be in different costumes or whatever. So when they explain Christianity, they they use like vegetables and fruits as like a, yeah. a a storytelling device. But but no, when the Jews do it, when DreamWorks does it, they use realistic depictions of people and make it real tragic. I I think this movie is universally liked. Like I think that a lot yeah. of people. It's I mean it's a wholesome movie, even if you don't believe in like the like miracles and like religion aspect of it that's true but uh, is it dreamworks because i feel like don't dreamworks animation right here i Um, i wonder if uh the dreamworks also made the road to el dorado wait i wonder if prince of egypt was dreamworks first movie maybe that's maybe that's what it is dreamworks dreamworks (laughs) uh movie dreamworks Dreamworks movie the hard hard. list (laughs) I want to see what I want to see where this. Oh, here we go! List of DreamWorks adaptation films. Ants was the first one. Oh, Ants was Holy right. Shit. Well, right, that, that movie was. <laughs> That's what it was because I remember because they were thinking like uh, DreamWorks ripped off uh, the A Bug's, Bug's Life. Life, and when they released Ants, and they they released DreamWorks released Ants like two months or something before like they pushed the release date up so they could screw over disney or whatever oh did they yeah oh and then like it didn't like it didn't get as much hype as a bug's life still but like it's like so weirdly dark and adult compared to bug's life yeah yeah it was like more edgy 
it had that like 90s like <laughs> like alt comedy you know style right okay i'm re- i'm remembering the reason like ants and prince of egypt are known is are, are known what they're known for is they're the first DreamWorks, but it was like when the people from whoever broke off from like Disney and the other animation studios formed DreamWorks, they decided to like do all these more like adult based cartoon, like animated films. Yeah. And so they could like break away from like that Disney, like aimed at a younger audience and more wholesome audience. Like, yeah. That's, that's what, that was the whole point of it. So they came out with ants and a bug or uh, ants and uh, Prince of Egypt. And then they did do Roald Dale yeah, Dorado right that, after that's that. That's the third movie, so I guess. And then whatever... Chicken Run, that movie's frigged up, dude. <laughs> it actually is like, but I like the um, is the, like that's not DreamWorks original like style. The claymation that did like Wallace and Gromit. No, no, that well, that's like Ardman, but it says like right under yeah, Chicken Ardman. Run, it, it's DreamWorks uh, and Ardman Animations. Yeah, so it's both of them. I like I like that style a lot. Like, Me too. But yeah, it's really impressive. It is. I would love to try to do something like that someday. It's just very time consuming. I think like I'm just thinking of like stop motion, like Kubo in the Kubo and the Two Strings. I think there was a character, or the 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 there was like a the Beetle character or whatever. He had a bow and arrow. Oh really? So there is a stop motion bow and arrow somewhere. I've actually haven't seen that one yet, which. I've just forgotten about it and like Dude, I, that's the greatest. <laughs> I definitely so want good. to see it. I, I try to watch every stop motion movie because it's just like such a feat of labor, you know? Um I've actually never seen uh Anomalisa yet either. Oh really? That is that movie's that one you have to like you have to be in a certain kind of mood to watch that one because it's really freaky, but it's like it's slow. Like you're gonna like first question what this is for a while and then like as it goes on it gets really like uh it's like disturbing but like really uh like thought provoking so it's it's a good it film. makes sense it's dan Harmon, right yeah starburn studio uh yeah it's I mean, they also did moral oral the show from like pff, 10 years ago 15 years ago uh yeah yeah dino stantopoulos he wrote uh moral oral Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, and that's that. like a creepy, like kind of quiet show that has like really realistic moments. Like in Moral Oral, they like they like essentially show that his father like abuses him and like beats him with a belt and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's like it gets really dark, but overall it's supposed to be a comedy show. But I mean stop motion and like I love seeing any stop motion. Yeah, it's just impressive that someone was able to do it. Like pull it off like it's so much work. Yeah. This is I the like character. The, yeah, Ryan pulled up the character from Kubo. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Beetle. Nice. <laughs> Succinct. <laughs> yeah. And that's from Laika, right? Yeah, Laika. Uh, did they do The Coraline? greatest of all time. What? They did, did Coraline. That was their first. Yeah. Coraline was Laika's first film. Um, but... It was the first film they did under the name Laika. Like, they worked on Corpse Bride before that. But, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, but, like, it was called, what is it, uh, Will Vinton Studios before it was Laika. All right. Yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of want to I want to kind of dig into more characters that have a bow and arrow. Yeah, there's probably... Why don't we just look up characters that... <laughs> I know one I was from an to, anime. I was trying to think of like ones that I personally know. Characters like. with bows. I mean, like Robin Hood. Uh, the uh, the Disney animated Robin Hood where he's a fox. Oh yeah, I liked that movie when I was a little kid. Yeah. Uh, fictional characters, arrows and bows. Oh, the first one is Katniss Everdeen. Yeah, I don't know if Susan. I mean, she's Susan a good one. Pevensey. I don't know who that is. I don't know who most of these are. She's uh, the only one I recognize besides Robin Hood. William Tell. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Cupid. But I don't think that's <laughs> like the... Oh, yeah, Cupid. Like Yeah, I like yeah. that cherub. He, sh- he shoots you in the butt with a little hard arrow and you fall in love with the next person you see. Man, are, do all the do all the archery characters suck? I, 
You know what? This <laughs> list is not comprehensive because it doesn't even have Hawkeye on it. Oh, uh, yeah. 35 of the most famous archers in fiction. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The right. archery guide. If you count Sterling Archer, I, I would say he's the best, but he's not an archer. He just, that's his name. Uh, what about Archer, uh, archer from uh, uh, Fate, you know, the Fate series? Like, Fate. Oh, I vaguely they, know what you're talking about. There's, like, a character named Archer, like, one of the gods from <laughs> yeah, is the he Fate like, series. Is he, like, an assassin Yeah. god? Yep. Yeah, okay, I do remember that. He's pretty badass. But yeah, oh man, there's, okay, there's many archers from popular culture here. And this one's got them all, I think, because famous <laughs> archers in movies, TVs, and books. It's like Green Arrow, obviously. Legolas, like, I don't see how I forgot that one. Yeah, Orlando Bloom. Oh, yeah, he's, he, he looks all tall, and like, he's got the blonde hair, and he's, those pointy ears, man, they get me every time, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. Like, I uh, didn't care for those films. <laughs> you know, we got Katniss again, and then Hawkeye again, but we knew those. But Laura Croft, I didn't even think about that. She uses a I bone mean, arrow. That makes sense. I like Laura Croft all right. Yeah, me too. Do you know any of the other ones that are on there? Oh, Daryl Dixon. Princess, uh, fuck, fuck Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, Princess Marita, <laughs> Nay Teary, Susan Pevensey, Daryl Dixon, and Malcolm... Merlin, Abigail Whistler, Will Treaty, Artemis. I've heard of Artemis, but I don't, I'm not really sure. Uh, mm. In video games. Oh, Link. Yeah, I love Link. He's he's definitely my favorite then. Link. Oh, yeah, from the video games. Yeah, from oh. uh, Legend of Zelda oh, series. Oh, of course. Yeah, I like how it just says Skyrim. Like, it doesn't name a character. It's yeah. just... <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> but... You know, you Pit, can't talk I, about Archer without talking about William Tell. Like, I didn't even think about that. That's, like, one of the most famous archery stories of all time. I, I've i heard the name before, but I don't really remember. Oh, really? Isn't he the guy who, like, did the shooting the apple off the head thing? Maybe. I, I mean, sounds familiar. I feel like I should have typed in who was William it Tell. It came up. But William yeah. Tell is a folk hero of Switzerland. According to the legend, Tell was an expert marksman with the crossbow who assassinated Albrecht Gessler, a tyrannical reeve of the Austrian dukes of the House of Hasburg, positioned in Aldorf in the uh, canton of Uri. Hmm. Woo! Wow, that's what he is, but what did he do? So medieval shit. Dude, people also ask, what is the story of William Tell? I want to know the story. Like, why is he famous? Go for it. Oh, man. According to Sooties, Shooties, how do you pronounce that? T S C H U? Sooties account. William Tell was known as a strong man, a mountain climber, and an expert shot with a crossbow. I thought it was a bow and arrow. In his time, the house of Habsburg, uh, Habsburg, Habsburg Empire. <laughs> of Austria were seeking a dominant URI and Tell became one of the conspirators of Werner Stauffscher who vowed to resist Habsburg rule. Is that what you just were saying? <laughs> um, some of, yeah, some I, of it. I want to know what he was famous for, wasn't Because there's always, I think it was just like the apple. Just put William Tell apple. Oh, that, yeah, that was the first suggestion, actually. Oh, okay. When you put A. I thought he was famous for the apple shot. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Shooting oh, yeah, an apple off one child's head. <laughs> off of his son's head. <laughs> wow. Shooting an apple off of one's child's head, also known as apple shot, is a feat of marksmanship with a bow or crossbow that occurs as a motif in a number of legends in Germanic folklore. William Tell was German. Yep, that's what they were, That's what I read earlier. Wow. Um, have you ever seen that that fucked up video? <laughs> There's this drunk girl and she's like sitting underneath a dartboard and she's like telling. What? Yeah, and she's like telling the guy to like because he's like trying to show off and like throw the dart like above her head. Yeah. And I'm like just do it, just go. And uh, and then he just like throws it directly into her eye oh like that's terrible like yeah it's pretty gruesome she, oh i wonder if she like went to the hospital immediately or she was probably blind 
I'm not sure. There was That's no follow up. Yeah, Jesus. So. <laughs> Ryan uh, really enjoyed seeing that. I don't want to see an arrow to the eye, and I definitely don't want to see a dart to the eye. <laughs> I'm sure the arrow thing would be much worse. Uh, but yeah, it's. I don't know. Don't don't get drunk and do stuff like that, and like just take it easy. Um, but yeah, like uh, I was gonna say, um, I forgot one of the. I don't know if I can say cool because it's really fucked up. It's... Have you ever heard about the movie We Have to Talk About Kevin? No. <laughs> we have to talk about Kevin. Yeah, there's archery in that. <laughs> there's archery in that uh, show. It's like a psychological thriller, and like, I feel like the only thing that would make you interested enough to watch it is like hearing the biggest, like, the spoiler at the end of the movie. So it's like, ah, I it's hard to say anything about it. Uh, but yeah. It's There's just, an archery spoiler at the end of this movie? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. If you want to find a, the secrets of archery, go watch We Need to Talk About Kevin um, and watch till the end, apparently, whether you think it's bad or not. It's got a 90% likes from Google users, and then on Rotten Tomatoes, it got 75. But uh, it's definitely, like, really dark and really creepy. Uh, I would say aesthetically, it would be similar to... Uh, um, Gone Girl... Have you ever seen that? I've heard of that. I haven't watched it. Have you ever seen um, Deus Ex Machina? I think I've seen that, yeah. Where they're like, it's the two guys in the house and the dude's like building androids and shit. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of like quiet and creepy throughout the whole movie. Yes. That's how this movie feels. Like you're just like like waiting for something to happen. Or that, or that newer movie, uh, Parasite. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch that one yet, but I know you were talking about it. I, yeah. I need to get on that. But, the, like, this movie, we need to talk about, Kevin. It doesn't have, like, really that cartoonish, like, characters. It's more, like, grounded in reality. Oh, okay. And, like, John C. Riley plays the kid Kevin's dad. Mm -hmm. And then Tilda Swinton is his mom. Oh, man. Tilda Swinton? Apparently, they're making Labyrinth 2, and everybody's saying that they want Tilda Swinton to be the new Jareth, like, instead of David Bowie. She would fit. I remember uh, years ago when they were when they announced that they were going to have the next Doctor on Doctor Who be uh, a woman. Yeah. Everybody was, like, trying to petition to get Tilda Swinton to be the Doctor, which I think that would have been amazing, but they... You know, I don't know if she even tried to get the part or not, but I know like, like all the fans were like, "We want Tilda Swinton." Like she's fucking cool. You know, she has, you know, she has such a dynamic range as a as an actor. But uh, does it say who directed that movie? Yeah, I'm sure it does somewhere. Uh, director Lynn Ramsey. Oh, okay, I'm not familiar with them, but. It's a fucking good movie. It's it's from the UK. <clears throat> uh, I have not heard of a single film that she has directed. So I've heard of You Were Never Really Here because that's uh, <clears throat> Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, okay. My mom mentioned that movie one time. I was like, oh, maybe I should watch that. But if she if this woman directed, you know, it's probably good. Yeah, I bet it is. Man, but. Uh, what what other? Did, I mean, did, did that list really have all of them? Because I thought of Kevin. Is there like any obscure ones? That... Obscure archers. Um, Horace A. Ford. I don't know who that is. That's obscure or simply Scowl. 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 Tomo goes in Apollo. I've heard of Apollo. Yeah, yeah. I mean Pitt. I, I know, of yeah. course. Oh, the, the, the middle list is all from history. Yeah. That's probably why I don't know of any of them. Like, I know more of the fictional. Yeah, like Cupid and Robin Hood. Did I mean, you ever watch uh, Robin Hood Men, Men in Tights? Tights? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Who directed that movie? I don't know. Because I feel like it was, I don't know. I feel like it was a very specific director that did that type of comedy. Wow. Oh, I got 
Mel Brooks. <laughs> okay, it was Mel Brooks. That's who I was thinking because he did like Hot Shots and uh, he did uh, Blazing Saddles and stuff. Yeah, like, those are all. Well, some of those uh, are not very like PC in today's no, terms. No. <laughs> like you could never make uh, Blazing Saddles right now, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was, times were different. Yeah, but it's you know it's a reflection of its time, and it was yeah it was really funny still. <laughs> Um, I it was a funny movie. It, it got bad reviews though critically. Rotten Tomatoes forty, Metacritic forty four, but then Google users gave it ninety two. Yeah, it's weird. Like nobody liked. Like critics hated it, but although every, it's cri- a very well known like niche movie. I bet most um Mel Brooks movies are critically like you know trounced upon <laughs> yeah comedy comedies, yeah. comedies never do well critically i mean no matter what it is like do you think borat was critically acclaimed i really doubt probably it probably not but it's it's like it movies like that become a part of culture it's like yeah it I doesn't mean, matter if that's why comedy is like an unstoppable force you know i mean it doesn't matter if it's critically, you know, exalted, like comedy, like people still need comedy, and people will think things fun- are funny, even if the critics are like, yeah. "It's juvenile slop." Yeah, even if, yeah, it, because you don't need to. It, they're like people aren't finding the meaning of life in this film, so they can't like enjoy it. It's like stupid. Yeah, is there like what else should we learn about archery? Have you ever shot? at all i've shot a bow before i i have but only like maybe two times have you ever shot like um have you ever shot like the kind of like compression bows like the newer kind or have you shot like a um no like more the little old like wooden kind of like, yeah more like a long bow yeah long bow i feel like i've done both but um the- I, ha- I haven't used like a modern one i've used like up sheer force type of longbow where there's no uh like yeah p- pulleys and stuff i feel like the modern ones are way easier oh yeah i'm sure they are and i'm sure they're built to be like more tactical but i think people use longbows because it's like traditional and like they want to do something that's like og you know yeah yeah i think it's more fun to shoot like a like a traditional bow yeah like if i was gonna buy one I would definitely just get a long bow. Mm-hmm. I think that they're probably, I'm they're probably cheaper, right? Just a regular long bow. Oh yeah, because there's not it's you know, it's not as much like technology involved in it and like engineering. Dang, there's a lot of history when it comes to bows and arrows. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna have to pick a part of history to go to. Because we already know that it started in like twenty thousand yeah. BC. We like, saw the ancient like, and then you it says there that ancient history you know it spanned throughout North Africa, and Mesopotamia, the Eurasian steppes, India, Greece, Romano antiquity, and East Asia, which are kind of things we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Then up into the Middle Ages, and then the decline of archery. Oh, that's what I want to know about. When did archery start going away? I would imagine like a, when guns started becoming mass manufactured. Probably, but like... <laughs> but go ahead. Okay, the decline of archery. The advent of firearms eventually rendered bows obsolete in warfare. Despite the high social status, ongoing utility, and widespread pleasure of archery, almost every culture that gained access to even early firearms used them widely to the relative neglect of archery yep you're right perfect the guns the guns took our bows away <laughs> they took our bows <laughs> they took our germs <laughs> like they could like all the guys that were like refused to switch would go out onto the battlefield while there's everybody has rifles they're like trying to shoot arrows like i'm I, bet, I bet you any money there were like archers in the civil war because because it's a different type of ranged weapon like you can essentially have like a back line of archers uh try to take out like a big number of them like with a group of arrows and then like have the like artillery and stuff like advance yeah oh wait i looked up if there were archers in the civil war and it says 
when the American Civil War began in 1861, Archer was stationed... Well, this is a guy named James Archer, but, I mean, he's pretty close. He was stationed in Fort Walla Walla in the Washington Territory. So, technically, there was an archer there. But were there bows there? There's also an article that says archery in the Civil War. Oh. I think we may be on to something here, Jacob. You may have figured out the history. I was one. I always wondered if archery was ever used during the war. From my understanding, good inf- entry in- infantry men could fire three to four shots a minute. I'd imagine that having archers behind the firing line would keep the constant fire on the enemy being able to fire many more shots. Jacob, you are on this guy's page. Anyone know if archers were used? If not, why? Uh, I know of no occasion it happened, but a one-off, it would uh, not surprise me if it had However, and here's the point, to train a good archer, uh, one would be able to use on the battle, uh, battlefield takes years. A traditionally British or Welsh, uh, Welsh longbowman took a lifetime to train, and Sunday practice was mandatory. Cannon! <laughs> For those uh, of the correct age, to train a decent enough black powder soldier takes a few weeks. More is better. That means much larger armies can put, be put onto the field. Also, by this point, anyone with uh, a bow is going to be vastly outdistanced by somebody with a rifled musket and a decent aim. Though, yes, an archer can use indirect fire. It isn't easy as it might appear, though. So, I mean, it probably was just a really uncommon thing because of uh, the fact that it's a skill that you have to hone. Whereas, like, a gun, you just pick it up and shove, like, a a ball and black powder inside of it and you just aim and aim and fire you didn't have to train skilled like uh, marksmen specifically for like long bows true yeah because for the like you have to shoot it much further with the bow and you're also shooting up into the air and like arching the arrow down to hit a target i mean i guess uh, a good example of like this is around the same time like maybe a little after like when they were kind of like expanding to the west and like just imagine all the like native americans that were like fighting back with bows and arrows against guys that had fucking guns and like they were just getting mowed down so eventually like native americans would like pillage the guns depending on if their tribe like allowed to break the tradition of using bows and arrows see that's messed up because it's like, oh man, like they couldn't do anything against it. Like you, you can't like overpowering like people like that seems crazy. Well, to circle back to the road to El Dorado, that's kind of what they depicted in that movie too. Like the Spanish conquistadors just like yeah came in and started just like wrecking everything, just like <laughs> wrecking everyone's shit and taking everything and like destroying their like fucking the civilizations. Yeah, it's like damn, like. I don't know. It's sad, but it's like it's like part of history, you know. It is, and it's just like I can't imagine living in a time like that where like you have no protection and you're like you're just like anything that comes at you, you basically could die from. Yeah. Well, my, reminds me of the recent trouble uh, troubled times we've had in all yeah. these great cities across the country, and yeah. We hope everyone's trying to stay safe and, yep. you know, just care for each other. That's all we can do. Yeah, all we can do in this these crazy times. Have each other's back. Uh, don't be a douchebag. Yeah, don't be firing arrows into people's chests and throwing <laughs> bricks through windows. Yeah, <laughs> and definitely don't throw a dart into your friend's eye when they're <laughs> drunk. Yeah, that was uh, uh, it's so... Uh, it's almost as bad as walls fall out. Oh, 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 I didn't even think about that. I uh, forgot I'd, I'd gotten rid of it from my memory, and now it's back. Don't don't watch that video. I don't endorse that video. No. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Um, earlier when you were uh, talking about, like, the ancient archery, I was thinking about that scene in 300 yeah. where they, like, make a dome of shield all around themselves because the Persian army just, like, fired, like, millions of uh, arrows into, into the, the sky, sky. And it, like, blacked out the sun. That was a fucking trippy-esque 
scene dude yeah i was just thinking like i wonder if those techniques have like a name like like in the army like, oh like formations like, yeah form is it like yeah, oh, yeah arrow it's... rain and then they like <laughs> all shoot their arrows up and it just rains down on the anime i mean yeah if you have that small like tight-knit small army like you can have formations that are more complex yeah so i just typed in uh archer techniques and it came up with archery skills rules and techniques i think this is for like the actual game of archery but we might we might see the some... game of archery oh with like a like target. with a target yeah okay. like in in that scene in robin hood when he splits the arrow in half oh yeah okay we it looks like we've got a lot of uh good information here about archeries at least bows but we got like the types of bows and equipment which we can kind of skip through this because we already mentioned there was like the long bow, the recurve bow, and the compound bow. Yeah, and the long bow. Yeah. So, so those are the three main types. Yeah, and the one I was talking about, like a modern bow, is a compound bow. That's what yeah. that's called. The one I was picturing, though, as far as what I would get, I wouldn't actually get a long bow. I'd get a recurve bow because they're a little bit easier to manage and they take up less space. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, they're shorter. They ha they look more of like think of a skateboard and a longboard, same same deal. A recurve is shaped more like like the side of a heart or like a bracket. Uh, isn't it shaped like a like this like a harp, kind of? Like, yeah, the you, side of a harp. Like the side the, of a harp. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said heart, and I was like, no, no, harp. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what that one looks like. Gotcha. Okay. Compound bow has all the like pulleys and shit. Yeah, yeah, like what you would see Daryl Dixon using yeah yeah um archery skills and techniques so you gotta if you're gonna be an archer you're gonna need to have proper stance <laughs> you have to line up so your feet are in line towards the middle of the target <laughs> your feet should be shoulder width apart and your toes should be pointing at a 90 degree angle from the target in other words you drew an imaginary line from the center of the target and it would hit the side of your foot <laughs> so that's what you're gonna do for proper stance uh <laughs> you want to tell them uh about Putting the arrow in the bow. If you pizza one, you French fry, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> put the arrow. This is put the arrow in the bow. Put the arrow in the arrow rest, which is a part of the bow. Place the bowstring into the knock, which is the slotted portion of the back of an arrow. Oh. You got to knock that arrow, bro. Mm, that's a good way to remember the name. If you want to go, boop, got to knock that arrow first. Usually... <laughs> The fletching or the feather or plastic stabilizing portion of the bow will have one that is odd colored, as you can see in the image below. And it's showing bright red and yellow uh, little wings at the end of the arrow. It looks very similar to the back of a dart, which, as we all know, you want to keep away from your eyeball. <laughs> yeah, and you want to keep it away from being black aldro. Yep. Typically, I'll uh, grip the string, Ryan. Let's see what we got here. All right, the next step is you're going <laughs> to grip the string. Typically, three fingers are used to hold the string. The pointer finger is held above the arrow in the middle and the ring finger below the arrow. The grip should be loose. Yeah, sort of like using chopsticks in a way. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of a loose grip, but you want to make sure you got it in the right place because you're going to use all your hand strength to start pulling that back, which we got right here coming yeah. up next. Draw the bow. Raise the bow and draw or pull back the string. Your bow arm, the arm that is not drawing the string, should be pointed toward the target. Next, draw the string toward an anchor point. This varies depending on whether or not you're using a sight. Ooh. Anchor points are typically the chin, corner of the mouth, or ear. So you kind of like rest your shoulder up against your face. Yeah, and you you pull back like right past where your ear is. That's what I was always yeah. taught. Yeah, like if you just imagine Katniss Everdeen on the cover of The Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take, take the same exact stance. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take aim. Some people aim with a sight and others do not. That's all there is for aim. So <laughs> I'll do release too. Yeah, so ahead. this is what we've been building up to. You got your bow drawn. You've got your, you know, gazelle or whatever out there in target. And you, you got to release. You got to let go of the string by relaxing your fingers. Don't jerk and move the bow after you release the arrow. Stay in the stance until arrow hits the target. As to not move while the arrow is being released. 
Yeah. Uh, so you don't want to like fidget at the very end there when you're trying to shoot. Otherwise, yeah. your your arrow isn't gonna fly true and yeah. take down the beast. It could go all wonky on you. So like, uh, yeah, and, and and that can be kind of the scary part is when you're first learning how to like release that because you know how much tension is on it. And you're, sometimes it'll like slap your fingers away mm-hmm. if you don't release fast enough. So sometimes they'll have like little finger protectors that you wear for archery. Oh yeah, sim- and, and sim- then you have like a wrist guard usually because the the string will like snap against your wrist. That's like you're on your bow hand, yeah. as it was called. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, so you know, aim and then release, and that's you know that's the end of the process. You know, and then you go boop. <laughs> yeah, right and- into the beast or the uh, the bullseye the target. target. So like archery is not used very much anymore in war apparently so no uh now all it is is a it's just a game basically i mean i know that some people play it in like school like they'll have it like well, it'll be like special like gym class thing or... yeah but a lot of people use it for hunting yeah but... a lot of people use it for hunting still yeah i mean some people like only go bow hunting yeah and it kind of makes sense because a bullet wouldn't a bullet could like affect the the animal that you're you're taking down yeah like they always tell uh, like hunters usually will say that you're supposed to aim for the lungs because they'll die at, like immediately from asphyxiation. Um, whereas if you shoot them like in the leg or like in the head or something like you're like their their bones are like exploding and it can it, it can ruin like the parts of the meat and like stuff that you want to keep. Yeah. Like especially if you want to keep the bones, you know. Yeah, but like an arrow is not gonna do that. No, and. I don't know. I feel like I, if I like wanted to go hunting, I would probably want to use a bow just because I kind of like that stealthy aspect. Whereas a gun, it's just like so loud and obnoxious and like super dangerous. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd probably, but I I've never had any desire to go hunting. Like, do I eat animals? Like, yes. Admittedly, you know, I, from the time to time, I eat animals, but it's like I don't know if I really want to personally go out and take their lives. Uh, I yeah, I like other people to do my dirty work for me. So if I had to, like, if I was in a position where I had to live off the land, like, could I do it? Yeah, I mean, to save my life, of course. Yeah, I would do it, but I wouldn't like it. <clears throat> Neither would I. I mean, I'm just somebody that doesn't even really like getting, like, messy or, like, doing, like, dirty activities. Yeah, the man doesn't even like chicken wings. No, I don't. And it's it's half because I don't really like wings and half because of how disgustingly messy it is. Like, I'll, I'll enjoy a good boneless wing because I can just stab a fork into it and eat half of it, you know, and it's, like, no mess. Yep. I like the gruesome side of eating meat directly <laughs> off a bone while at the same time smothering sauce all over your face and fingers so that you look like a slob like a savage like a savage yeah it's like the blood of your it's like the blood of your enemy except it's parmesan garlic flavor <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that sounds disgusting i mean i know some people specifically like that process of eating wings like that's part of why it's not just that it tastes good I mean, it doesn't taste bad, but it's it's good, man. I don't. I, I'm not into like the process of it, and That's I mean, okay. But I will like. I'll go to town on a rotisserie chicken. Yeah, because you know it's not like slathered in sauce, and you can like somewhat. It's still greasy and like gross, though. You yeah, still get chicken's all just got it's it's because it's got a lot of fat in it, you know, and yep. the skin, the skin. Would you ever shoot a chicken in the face? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I don't even know if I would off. have the skills to be able to shoot a chicken. Like chickens <laughs> don't stand still. Like, oh, that's true. I like can't. if it's if you're chasing a chicken down, it's gonna be running away unless it's like in a coop and it's like laying. They w- they would lay like twenty seven eggs a day, dude. I think it's more really? than like, yeah. Chickens lay a crap ton of eggs a day. I mean, I, I'm sure they make even more if they're like in captivity. Like, I don't know if I should look that up right now because. I mean, we could do an episode about chickens, but... Yeah, I, I mean, we can do animals at some other... Like, yeah, we, there's yeah. There's plenty of animals we could talk about. We've talked about uh, dung beetles on that first episode. Which, that's true. That's I just, a timeless classic. <laughs> I'm just going to answer the one question, just so there's no... That's fine. How many eggs does... How many eggs does a chicken lay a day? 
A hen can lay only one egg in a day. Okay, it's definitely not 27. <laughs> and we'll have some days when it does not lay an egg at all. The reasons for this laying schedule relate to the hen's reproductive system, a hen's body being f- forming an egg shortly after the previous egg is laid, and it takes 26 hours for an egg to form fully. I swear it was like... I'm going to type in chicken. Tw- I'm just going to add yeah, 27. I, when you said that, I'm just thinking like, wait, what? I saw that somewhere. But, because like, think about how they'd have to clear them out like constantly so that the hen had room. <laughs> Jesus. Can a chicken lay 27 eggs in a day? Well, since the first thing that came up is can a chicken lay two eggs in one day, I think my statement may have been false. <laughs> Uh, when the hen reaches 18 to 20 weeks of age, she begins to lay eggs. Okay, so and she usually produces about one per day and occasionally releases two in the same 24-hour period. So, yeah, not 27. <laughs> it's all right, Ryan. I mean, sometimes you're just misinformed, and that's why we do the show. Cause that's partially from the Internet. Probably. God damn it, BuzzFeed. I mean... You pretty much got to be on the lookout for gaslighting whenever you're on the internet. Like, everyone, with all all the bullshit that's been happening lately, it's very fucking easy to get the wrong opinions, to to form things based on a a, a bias. That's true. Just keep yourselves informed and be nice to people. Like, that's, you know, it's the moral of the story. Let's fucking move on let's not let 2020 be a complete fucking waste of a year yeah it's been pretty bad so far <laughs> yeah so. fucking yeah it has but uh on a more positive note um do you think we might have a little bit of time for, for Jacob, Jacob and Ryan search of the week uh probably we may as well we can do a, a quickie I, I think I probably have some mundane stuff lying around all right you can go first all right, so I was thinking like during the week, like about my addiction to fast food, uh-huh. and well, I thought you were gonna say your addiction to to cock. My yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> my addiction to wieners. <laughs> you can't. You're just sucking down them dogs. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, there's so much hog in my mouth. <laughs> like literally, because you know, like hot dogs. I mean, that's what I mean. Yeah, man. So, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, But, yeah, no, I was thinking about, like, how, like, I'm, like, not addicted to fast food, but I just, like, feel like I eat fast food a lot. But I was thinking, like, you know, like, when you, like, quit something, like, it it affects your body if you quit it immediately and, like, don't, like, and you, like, switch it. Oh, yeah, if you go cold turkey. Yeah, cold turkey, yeah. And I was, like... Where the hell did the term cold turkey come from? Oh, like, okay. Why is it called cold That's what turkey? You're thinking of. Yeah. That's funny, but whoa. <laughs> That's so weird. Like, you'll see why it's weird when we get to my search. Oh. Where did the term cold turkey come from? Oh, here we go. A big uh, oh, yeah. picture of a Thanksgiving turkey up here, and it a says sweet, succulent gobbler. Oh, yeah. Gobble, it looks like a ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> but the expression first appeared in the Daily Colonist in British Columbia in 1921. Perhaps the most pitiful figure who have appeared before Dr. Carlton Simon are those who voluntarily surrender themselves. When they go before him, they are given what is called the cold turkey treatment. But where does it come from? It's from Merriam Webster, so you probably should go on that link. Do you think I should just go to the people also ask? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, because it's, what does the idiom cold turkey mean? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, you just want to know what it means? Well, yeah, yeah, well, I, oh, no, I don't want to know what it means. I wanted to know where it originated. Uh, maybe I should go. Well, you read that it came from the Daily Colonist in British Columbia in 1921. Yeah. It's just weird that they, like, why? who thought of cold turkey? But... I guess cold turkey means to quit something abruptly and without preparation or fanfare. Originally, cold turkey meant to speak plainly and bluntly, as in talk cold turkey. Today, someone who speaks plainly is said to talk turkey, and someone who ceases an addiction activity, such as smoking, is said to be quitting cold turkey. 
Oh, okay, I got it. Because, like, cold turkey is just such a, like, plain thing that, like, when you quit something cold turkey, it's like you're going from having the thing to being, like, plain again. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So if I, yeah. So if I stopped eating fast food cold turkey, it just means my body's adapting to what it would be like without. Yeah. I mean. Something, it would be more normal than if I was doing that. Because they said in the Merriam-Webster thing, when they go before him, uh, they are given what is called the cold turkey treatment. Mm -hmm. And then it said, like, that means to talk plainly and bluntly, so that's probably what it used to mean like he got the cold turkey treatment and somebody just chewed him out yeah and then it became some like it it took on a different meaning yeah as time went by yeah yeah okay it's kind of uh serendipitous to me too because um my search that i thought of a few days ago is also an idiom and it's also bird related what <laughs> Really? Yeah, it's. I was thinking, where, where, uh, like, what is the origin of silly goose? Like when you call somebody, <laughs> you, you silly fuck? goose. <laughs> really? Yeah, I literally just thought about this like a few days ago. I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to have that be a search of the week. What does the idiom silly or where does it come from? Yeah, well, I don't know. What where does silly goose come from or the origin of silly goose? I don't know. And it's also serendipitous because we've had a lot of bird-related things recently. Oh, that's true. We got the Cardinals. Maybe that's why it's been on our minds. Yeah. All right. Silly goose. It says <laughs> silly goose or geese. A foolish or ignorant person is called a goose because of the alleged, alleged stupidity of this bird. <laughs> Brewer's Dictionary and Phrase and Fable revised by Adrian Room in 1999 or that's the source that is coming from Whoa, holy shit um um then then people also ask where does the term silly goose come from geese are known to travel in flocks so behavior departing from that tendency um toward conformance with normal group behavior could be derided as an abnormal and hence denigrated as silly that makes so much sense because like I didn't realize that like geese like just randomly like go away from their pack or uh, uh, like they don't like travel in a pack like some of them just go off on their own like at <laughs> random and are just like fumbling around. Look at that silly goose! Like you just see one like there's yeah. like a formation, but then one's just like eh. yeah, like, he's just, like uh, going in a zigzag pattern and he ends up like on some like side street like by you, himself and he's confused. Then you zoom into like you pan to like a close up of him and it's just like he's just like flying like dun, 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 yeah, and he's dun. got like a big bead of drool coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, no, like I, there's these geese that always like try and go past the like cr the street over by the hospital. Yep. Yeah, I knew that's what you were gonna say because they are they're always there, like crossing the street, like around Russia, and all they're the time. always like all dopey, like they yeah. never like just go straight across the street, like they. Yeah, they just like they just like kind of fumble into traffic. They like fucking waddle around like like stupidly like they've gone across aim. the four-way intersection in front of the hospital there's just like this family of geese like fumbling around like yeah bumbling across the like street. they don't even know where they're going and then like all the the thing is they never get hit i never see dead geese over there everybody knows about the geese and they yeah. just like let them go i'm like i'm wondering like if an ambulance was fucking flying through there to get to the hospital if like the oh, geese yeah. were just in the way like would they avoid the geese like how what would they do oh man that's a good point like i can't believe that an ambulance hasn't like killed a, this this family of geese that are maybe just, like they, maybe there have been some fatalities maybe but... this geese aren't as silly as we thought they were <laughs> because like it's the... a conspiracy the goose it's a goose spiracy yeah how do they not die? Maybe they're ghost geese. They're just an illusion. They're an astral projection projection of geese. <laughs> they're space. They're space geese. Oh man, I don't want to get that thought because then next time I'm like <laughs> trying to cross the intersection, I'm gonna be like, like one they're of just them ghost looks, geese, so I can just drive right through them. Yeah, you get hurt. You'll see one of them look at you dead in the eye, and then it like telepathically sends you a message that just says, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, where did the term silly goose come from? I want to see, uh, uh, like, where it actually, like, started. Where is that? It says, search for, where did uh, the term for silly goose... Uh, I think it's, like, when was it first used? Yeah. Oh, how did the silly goose phrase originate on Quora? 
Mm. I'm sure this will be really helpful. How does... Uh, wait. Is it either in a Grimm's... Wait. I'm not sure about... I suspect it originated either in a Grimm's fairy tale or a Mother Goose moralistic story. Geese are known to travel in... Fro I already read that. That's the that's where they say that the group behavior could be abnormal when they like fly off on their own. <laughs> yeah, in the traffic. According to Oxford English Dictionary, silly is an alternate form of the earlier word silly, which when applied to animals as early as the 13th century, we used to describe them as innocent or harmless. Silly came to be used uh, to describe animals in the 17th century, the meaning shaded over to weak or feeble. Oh, that's weird. So there's, they're still basically saying that they're like, like handicapped or like <laughs> slow. Man, I'm surprised this term and hasn't that's gotten from, banned. That's from the 13th century when they said sealy, which is spelled S E E L Y, and then it turned into silly over the years. And now it silly means like funny. Yeah. Well, that's messed up though, because like if you're calling like your kid, you're like <laughs> a silly goose. You're basically like, "Hey there, you little retard!" Like, Aww. yeah, you're basically like talking down to them and saying yeah. that they're like slow and like. But the way that I always made jokes with like my friends in high school, like we would be like, "Stop it, you silly goose!" Like, just stop. It. Yeah, you're such yeah. A silly well, goose. I mean, your friends were just bumbling around into traffic, so. It was fine. <laughs> I I wouldn't put it past some of them. Uh, good times. God bless them. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that there you go. Silly goose. It's from as far back as the 13th century. We sure have learned a lot of things here today, Ryan. We have. And we can't wait to be back next.